also a GT5 special report from Gamescom, GTV Racer, and Top Sim Cars. This show is sponsored by Sim Raceway. Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Jessica Lopez. And I'm Darren Ganji. And this is episode 78. We're going to start off by talking about an online racing league, SSCA. That's right, Simulated Sports Car Association. Who is running their series and just had their first race this past weekend. The Team Challenge Series. And they've been around for 15 years and it was actually started by none other than the Mr. Ganji himself. Yeah, it was actually a league that uh, started right when online racing started. We were dialing into Watertown, Massachusetts to Papyrus's headquarters running NASCAR 1. Doing, it was actually simulated stock car association originally. We were just doing oval racing. Hmm. So uh, transition over the years to simulated sports car. So we do more road racing now. So anyway, yeah, uh, been kind of dormant for a while. and Yeah, and last time you guys raced was about three years ago. Yeah, exactly. Right when we started the show was uh, last time we raced, we were doing endurance races in SSCA, and then Sean and I ran out of time and just had devoted more time into the show. And Alex Uliri, old buddy of mine, and PJ Lossie stepped in, created a website, got the website up and running. and So back now in full effect and had yep. their season opener over the weekend. Darren and Sean are on a team together along with, uh, against 15 other teams, correct? Yeah, 14, yeah, exactly. There's 15 other teams, up to 35 drivers in races. So we had a lot in this last race. And uh, started off with the Daytona Road Course. That's right, in the uh, Riley Daytona prototype cars, which actually got running here behind us. And over 84 laps total. Yeah, it, That's it a was lot. a long one. Yeah, 300 miles. About three hours, caution flags, it was it was a long race. Well, Darren put together a race report of the results. That's right. So, let's take a look. On August 15th, the Simulated Sports Car Association Team Challenge Series headed to Daytona, Florida to tackle the three and a quarter mile road course better known for 24 hour endurance racing. 26 Riley Daytona prototypes came to do battle in the test of attrition, patience, and endurance. Starting on the pole for the first of 10 races was SK Gaming's Danny Engels, who ran a blistering 138.451, followed by My3ID Racing's Marcus Sari and Engels' SK teammate Dennis May, who rounded out the top three. Going into the race, it looked like SK Gaming was going to take the points lead in both the individual and team titles. Turn two would tell a different story, though, as Dennis May spun off course on cold tires as he attempted to look at a pass on Sari. After getting back on track, May would then have problems not even a half a lap later entering turn five as he rear-ended rookie driver Emmanuel Bacco, who was racing for Team Simcraft. Due in part to the damage that Bacco received on lap one, fast forwarding to lap 21, he spun entering turn one and Mark Heyman driving for SF Motorsports had no time to dodge him and hammers him bringing out the first of three safety car periods. The second caution of the day would come on lap 43 when Sari, who after suffering lag issues and some other odd stuttering problems, lost his motor as he was approaching the bus stop. I bet that Danny Engels really freaked out for a minute as he sat there and the yellow came out in the pits. Listen to him rev the motor as soon as the yellow waves. But everybody needed a pit stop at that point and he cycled right back to the league, so it didn't hurt him at all. But it did give Podium Assault's Brian Heitkotter and My3ID's David Williams a chance to stay on Ingles and make him sweat for a bit. Then the final caution flew when Virtual Apex Racing's Chad Peterson after having some rear wing damage, struggled to keep the car on track, and within a few laps, turned his car into something that no longer resembled a Riley. The last straw was this crab walk into the tire barriers to bring out the third and final caution. Then, the oddest of moments of the race occurred. Was it random, or did the car break some way? Look at how Heitkotter's Riley is tracking after this spin. That ended his day, and he couldn't even make it back to the pit safely, after having a great run. The last battle on the track for the day was for third between veteran sim racer Tony Legren running for Narval Racing and Infinity Racing's Darren Lobb. Legren would end up turned around without a chance to fight after Lobb missed his breaking points and punted him deep into turn one. Both would soldier on to finish though, Lobb in third and Legren in fourth. 
The star of the day, though, was Danny Angles, who pretty much led flag to flag. But unfortunately, due to May's bad outing and 21st finishing position, it pushed SK Gaming down to fourth in the team standings. Finishing in second behind Angles was David Williams of My3ID. For the team championship, Infinity Racing came out on top for the day with a third and fifth place finish. Narval Racing finished second and My3ID rounded out the top three. To check out what's happening now in the Team Challenge Series, head to sscarace.com to get in on the action. What a good way for sim racers to get involved in racing against each other and for the community to get together. We hear a lot about, you know, getting stuff in our forums from sim racers that there's not a lot of stuff going on, so... You know what, and I had missed league racing myself. I, I hadn't done any in a long time, and to get back involved with it and starting to race against the same guys, because we had, we had some practice races, but racing against the same guys week in and week out. And speaking of which, on Mondays there's another series that SSCA has going with the Vets and the Daytona prototypes, so it, it's, it's a lot of fun. And the camaraderie starts developing between the drivers and actually some rivalries too, which is really cool. So, so any sim racers out there that want to get involved with league racing, check out sscarace.com. That's right. And you must be an iRacing member to, to join in on the hosted races. So Absolutely, yep. Keep that in mind. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, if you have a league out there and you want to you know, have a recap on the show, get in touch with us, Darren at InsideSimRacing.tv, and, and we'll talk about getting your, you know, your post-race recaps here on the show too. That's right. On to our top sim car segment. Did a little something different on the last show where they took, yep. we took a top sim car and... Put it on a top sim track, which is our, <laughs> actually our test track, Eastern Creek. And recorded the lap times. Yep. We had been asked a bunch, you know, what kind of lap times are we running? And so we decided to put together a little piece with using the Bathurst Legends cars last week and uh, at Eastern Creek. So now we're going to do the same thing, but different car, different track this time. As a matter of fact, anyone that's interested can come to our website, InsideSimRacing.tv, and click on the top sim car list. That's right. And click on the top sim car, and it'll take you directly to the one-click install. Yep. Yep, it will. Well, there'll be links to it there, but yeah, you'll be able to get the car, the track, and get involved with, you know, running some laps against us. So going to do it again with this top sim car, and... All right, so here we go. Top Sim Car, sponsored by SimRaceway.com. The home of online racing. Here we are for Top Sim Car Racer Edition. Top Sim Track Racer Edition. I got Darren in the game pod right now. Hey everybody. He is still laying down our hot lap for this week. Um, yeah, this, this week we're not going to actually tell you our... My best lap right now is a 125.9. <laughs> I mean, and we haven't even told you what car and track it is yet, but... That's not what it's going to be when we, when we post it. <laughs> no, it will not. We are going to work on it till the very last minute we possibly can. Uh, the, the vehicle is cart factor, and this comes as a and suggestion. And we're going to need it driving like that. <laughs> See, we're working. Cart factor, it was a suggestion from Blixton Karting in our forum. He, he recommended cart factor with Verano. Darren actually recommended Montreal 1988, which comes at us from Carrera 4. I agree, this is one of my favorite tracks, so that's why it's here today. Cart Factor is one of our all-time best top sim cars, and this is a very interesting setup. Give you a little history about Montreal, better known as Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve, and sorry to all French-speaking people out there, and I'm going to murder a few French words right now. So I'm doing my best, I'm sorry. Anyway, it was Circuit Gilles Villeneuve, it was originally actually called Il Notre, Circuit Il Notre Dame, and that was prior to Gilles Villeneuve, and when he passed on, they actually renamed the circuit after him. In it's, 1982, right? Uh, that is correct. And um, this actually, a little more history, way back when, it was Mossport and Mount Tremblant were the two alternating courses. One was more of a French known, and one was more of an American known version of tracks in Canada and they alternated it to appease the different crowds. For Formula One. For Formula One. And years later, Mount Tremblant was thought to be not very safe, and they got rid of it from the schedule, and that left the French-type track, or, or French basis track, uh, not represented. So years later, 
This track was created. It, it takes place where the World's Fair was in 1967, so it's got a very modern look, a lot of cool buildings around the circuit, and it's really an incredible circuit. It is 2.71 miles long, or 4.36 kilometers, and 13 turns. The world record on the track is a 113.622 by uh, Rubens Barrichello, and we're not even you. close to that. We are going to be well off of that pace. But we're also in a, did we tell them what car we're running? Cart factor. So we are not in a Formula One car. We're in a very, very hard to drive, very fun to drive uh, cart car, Indy car, champ car. And uh, anything you want to say, there are a few elements of this track that make it tricky. Um, yeah, I mean, well, the chicanes, the hairpins, the walls, <laughs> or guardrails, I guess you could call them. Yes. Um, but yeah, actually, I'd like to talk about the car. Uh, this is one of our top sim cars. This was recommended by, uh, did you m mention that? Yes, I did that. Blixton Carding. Carding. <laughs> um, and th these cars are beasts. I love the sound. I can't get enough of the sounds of these cars. Yeah, the, some of the best sounds in all of sim racing. And then just so many to pick to choose from. Yeah, you got the full lineup of all. The other thing for me on these cars is when I'm out there driving, I recognize this is one of my favorite eras of racing. So I'm out there racing against guys that I cheered for with, with passion back in the day. Yep, me too. Uh, and the track, this track, uh, again, both of these are available, both the track and car are available at R-Factor Central. It's got 489 out of 500 for its initial score. So that's about as good as things get in the world of tracks. Yep. Uh, Darren mentioned the chicanes. There's a lot of chicanes drive through, makes it tricky. It is a bumpy track. There's a lot of life in this track. So despite not being laser scanned, uh, it definitely has personality. It's not just flat. Yeah, and some recommendations um, I'd like to make is uh, real feel for sure. Yeah. Go into the cart, uh, the cart factor readme and uh, make sure you get their settings, which actually takes you to the website, but get those real feel settings and make sure you plug them into real feel. Uh, made a big difference for me. Yeah. Um, I think I'm running at 360. We're running at 360 degrees rotation, uh, probably about 40% force feedback, and man, it's tough. <laughs> Oh, we made a lot of adjustments to the car, yeah, too. Yeah, I was just going to get to that. Okay, so in the first one, we were kind of sticklers based on top sim car being a uh, default set, being one of the things evaluated. We immediately had to make changes when we were doing lap times last segment. So this time, I think we're just wide open. No rules this time other than uh, it's got to be a quality lap, so no cutting the course, and uh, obviously no cheats of any kind. But uh, download the car from R Factor Central. Download the mod from R Factor Central. Do whatever you need to do to any of the cars because you've got several to choose from in this. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, post a setup of ours maybe so you guys can have something to work with for you. Um, we'll post our lap time as well so you'll be able to know what you're competing against. But you're going to have to go to our forums in order to participate in that. Why don't we go out this time with the actual lap? Okay. We'll show you guys the lap that we ran. We'll save it here. Anyway, another thing I'd like to say is it's really cool that you guys are all getting involved, guys and girls. And it, it, it makes it a lot of fun for us to all talk about it and, and post in the forums and, and great suggestions out there for, you know, you know what cars and tracks to yeah. do next. The only thing I wanted to say is some suggestions that were made were virtual LM tracks. Right. They're not at R Factor Central. Got to have stuff that's R Factor Central just to make it easy for everybody. It's got the one-click install there. Yep. And, you know, even if you've used all your one-click installs up, or if you want to pay for it. If not, you know, you can still get it there very easily. You yeah. know, vote on it there. Right. It's just, a, it's just a nice, easy place. So virtual LM, LM guys, Yeah. we love your tracks on this segment. How about having them at our Factor Central? That we get them on quick if they did. Exactly. <laughs> so I saw a forum post out there where somebody basically was calling me out how my time got beaten very quickly. And uh, I was out there looking for better lap times immediately, but Quasi actually set up a server for everybody to be able to participate in. And I think it's under ORA servers, but it's in our forum. You can check it out there for sure. And that was a good place for everybody to be able to compete. And I know a few people are having enough fun. And I even saw a comment about somebody getting to meet somebody else there. And, and that yeah. was a good time. Yeah, and he set it up in hot lap mode, which yeah. I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, that, that's really cool. <laughs> so um, right now we're, Darren's kicking my ass at this track so, so far. So it's looking like Darren is going to have our hot lap of this tournament. 
Well, and hopefully it'll stick for a little while. And, and we mentioned it, it's a 25.9 is what I'm running now. Another thing I want to mention, too, about this, these cars, let the tires warm up, man. Yeah. These things are very tough to get around the track in the first lap. <laughs> you know, second, third lap is when the tires really start grooving. And there's that last chicane that you can take about flat out. <laughs> I, I think if I get it flat out, I'm going to get maybe close to 23s. But yeah, that's going to be tough. Yeah. So that's going to so, do it, I think. We're going to go ahead and uh, get that hot lap recorded, and we're going to go ahead and play it right here for you to check out as we go out at Top Sim Cars. And let's see if you guys can beat my time this week. All right, first thing, setting up the lap, you need to go through this chicane as fast as you can to get a run at the start-finish line. Fifth gear, just kind of blipping the throttle. Wide open, sixth gear, kind of straight line, downshift into second gear, carry a little speed through here, and then all the way down onto the binders, down to 40 miles an hour. Second gear, just tiptoe on the throttle, wind it out third, fourth, and then quickly downshift back into second. Carry as much speed as you can through here. Again, tipping, tiptoe, again, tiptoe on the throttle, out of the corner, wide open under the Pirelli bridge. Into fourth, down into second again. Okay, tiptoeing in second gear, carrying as much speed as you can because this is one of the long straights. All the way up into sixth gear, you get to the Camp Perry Bridge. And then down into second gear as hard as you can. Get through this little section as fast as you can. Carry as much speed. Second, third, fourth. I usually just keep it in fifth, wind it out as far as I can, and then hard on the binders all the way down into first gear for this corner. Hug the, the apex as much as you can, and then tiptoeing on the throttle here. Breathe the throttle into second gear or you can spin and then wide open all the way through the gears. Might get into sixth. Right hander under the player's bridge is in fourth gear. Go over that rumple strip. And then this is the key, this, this fast chicane. I just get it down to the fifth, go over that first rumple strip and just kind of straight line through the rest. And that's a lap around Montreal, 123 flat. Game Pod, the ultimate race rig for those serious about sim racing, puts you in the driver's seat with all the controls at your fingertips. Be number one on the road, in the race, in the game. Game Pod, the choice of champions. Time to put a new product on our rev scale, and this time we have a wheel stand. That's right. It is the GTV Racer. That's right. I'd like to thank George Oswald, who is the designer and distributor of the GTV racer. Here in the States only, by the way. Um, he brought he it over to it. He yeah. delivered this. He, he brought, cool guy, brought it over to us, does some track days. He's got a BMW M3 and, and uh, it was a really cool guy. I'd like to thank him for bringing it over to us to, to check out. And this GTV racer retails for $189 plus an additional $20 for shipping. Unless you're in Alaska or Hawaii. And it is additional $40 for the shifter mound there. That's right. And this is very lightweight, actually. We can... Why don't we show them? Yeah. See how lightweight, even with the Porsche wheel attached, you know, we can both pick that thing up no problem. Uh, this is probably the lightest wheel stand yeah. we've had in the shop. It's made out of aluminum. Aluminum with some, with the, the joints or connectors are all uh, like a high-grade plastic. And uh, it's it, nice. I like the colors. Just simple, plain and black. Yep. Plain silver, silver and black. black. Yeah, <laughs> matches the uh, the Fanatic 911 Turbo S, which is cool. But yeah, it's 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 a cool stand. Honestly, I haven't even tried it yet. We just now pulled it out of the box. Came nicely packaged, but uh, by the time we get to the review that you guys are about to watch, I will have tried it a bunch. So speaking of the review, uh, here's Darren and Sean putting this GTV racer on our rev scale. So we're going to take a look today at a new wheel stand. And when I say wheel stand, I mean something that holds the wheel and the pedals and does not come with a chair. You're going to need your own or a couch or something. You can talk about the wheel stand. I'm still running hot laps for the top sim car competition. And, and that's Darren Ganji. He is my test hey, dummy for the day. Hey, hey. <laughs> the hell? That's, you did that on the last take. Don't be calling me dummy. He is the you test dummy? driver of the day. He's actually not a test driver. We are still 
trying to lay down that hot lap for the competition. That's so right. We said it would be posted. And yeah, we'll... we got beat too quick at, at Bathurst yeah. last week, so. Definitely have to be <laughs> a little harder. Yeah, we got to represent a little bit better this week. But right now, we are here for the GTV Racer, the model C1. And this is a very cool, uh, only uh, available in America wheel stand. It is made of aluminum and plastic and has tons of knobs. And that's, it's adjustability. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So it's only available in the United States and it's $189 plus $20 shipping. We also have the shifter mount over there, which is $39. That's right. Matter of fact, speaking of shifter mount, we have the Fanatic shifter mounted to it, which it originally was mounted or made for the G25 and, or G27. And good old Sean, Mr. Fabricator here, <laughs> uh, actually took a design that we found on our forums uh, where a guy stuck bolts, two bolts through, you know, the mounting points on the on the shifter where I had drilled wood <laughs> screws into that, which held up okay for a little while, a but time. just wasn't really the way to go. Wasn't so anyway, permanent. Yeah, this definitely doesn't affect your warranty and is solid as a rock. So we're gonna matter of fact put something in our forums and show you guys how to do it. Yeah, so check that good. in our hardware section. Definitely. So back to the GTV racer, and we're, instead of getting uh, long and detailed, I think I want to just get to the pros and cons today, and that way we can be a little bit more thorough about each thing that we like and dislike. So Sounds good. I'm actually, I was going to start with the pros, but I think I'm going to switch and start with the cons. Um, I kind of got to talk a little, little about everything. The whole thing is very adjustable. But the problem for me is under heavy usage, and, and some people know my nickname, the saw. I destroy wheels and rigs. This thing did wiggle a little bit for me and changed its position. Uh, and it's very adjustable, which is great, but it did move. Darren had no problem at all. Darren is a much more finesse type driver than I am. And it's been very, very stable in that department. And when I say twisting, I mean it actually moved where I had it set, the angle it was set at. I yeah. kept pulling it yeah, down. Yeah, and I, and I sat next to him when he was doing it, and it was definitely solid. But I honestly, like Sean said, I did not have that problem. I'm driving it right now, and it's not moving. No. It's not moving around, but I'll, I will yeah. mention the other problem I did have with it. But The other little problem, and it's sort of the same, it's very lightweight. Well, when I was sawing on the wheel, I got it to kind of jump the rear end a little bit. Again, I've watched Darren turn tons of laps. He doesn't seem to have that problem. That seems to be under heavy usage. Uh, the last thing is, I mentioned, it's got plastic and these knobs that clamp down, and that's the way it slides and adjusts. I think over tightening over time is going to really affect how long it lasts. So I'm a little well, concerned about that. Yeah, and not only that, they also don't, I mean, it's, we've, we've snugged these things as tight as we can get them. And I mean, I can show you guys here right now. I mean, this thing's still got a little bit of movement here. Yep. And, and while you're racing, you know, this thing just, even me being more of a finesse driver, Sean the saw, I mean, this thing's down in his lap. <laughs> it stays snug enough to where it's not gonna, it's not gonna fall in your lap. I mean, right. that was an over-exaggeration, but um, it definitely has some movement there. I mean, that, that's definitely, I would say my last con yeah. for yeah. that. Um, and then my last con is that it's a little, you're going to have to adapt it for certain wheels. This is G25, G27 ready for sure, but I wanted a 911 on there. For me, I drilled holes, which I had to do first of all because the clamp wouldn't work. And then I noticed that the way it's centered on here, on, this is a plastic plate uh, for the wheel, the deck, and that my hardware conflicted. Um, so that does it for the cons. Those are some pretty minor details. Uh, if you are gentle on the wheel, and you probably know if you're gentle or hard on the wheel or not, uh, you're not going to have half the problems I just described there. Now let's go on to the pros. This is the lightest wheel stand I've ever tried, and, and I thought that would be a bad thing because sometimes I expect things to be heavy to be strong. Uh, yeah, it's, you would expect a, a lightweight wheel stand to not be as stable as yeah. this one is, which is probably one of your next pros. It, and that's exactly it. It is very solid. When you move the wheel, and this is sawing, I'm not getting wiggle out of the stand. I had that problem with it changing its angle, but it did, wasn't wobbling. And considering how lightweight it is, that's amazing. The other thing is, being lightweight and being as adjustable as it is, um, it's very easy to put away. Uh, you fold it down, you move the wheel around if you need more space, and you can pick it up. It, it's practically like 
adding the weight of the wheel doubled the weight of the whole stand. So that just to give you an idea, it's that light. <laughs> yep. Um, the other thing is it's easily adaptable for shapes and sizes. So it's not super tall, but you can adjust the angle here. You can adjust the angle here. You can adjust the wheel deck angle. You can adjust the height of this. So if you needed it very tall, you could do that. It's, it's very nice in that department, and that works very well for me. Yeah, and I'd say this is probably the optimum seating position, you know, down. You know, we're probably about 12 inches off the ground or so, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, and that seems probably one of the optimum positions for this, yeah. for this rig. We did try it sitting on the couch. Actually, we didn't actually race sitting on the couch. We didn't pull it up <laughs> like we did on the last review. But um, it was in a position to where it would work. Yeah. So that's a lot of pros. Uh, the pros are very good. They definitely outweigh the cons by quite a bit. I'll, I'll, I'll like to add a, a couple. Okay. Price. Yes. Cost. Oh, absolutely. It's very affordable. It's yes. under 200 Yeah. Um, another thing I'd like to add... Oh, I knew there was another one. <laughs> Dual post design. Oh, yes. How can we leave that out? As I crash. <laughs> um, yeah, I was sitting there thinking of what I had two pros that I wanted <laughs> to add to it. And I could not think of the other one. It doesn't have a single post design that comes up between your legs, which right. I do not like. Yep. Especially for if you're going to try to heel toe. Yep. Um, but I like the dual post. And, and again, the cost. It, yep. It's under 200 and it's, yeah. it's affordable. Yeah. So as you can see, the, the pros outweigh the cons by a ton. And in fact, if you're a, a light on your wheel, the cons list is diminished to practically nothing at all. Yep. Um, I guess again, another con is it's only available in America. Yeah, that's definitely a con. So, um, yeah, because this is a good rig. Because yeah. I mean, I, it, you know, George, I'm sure you're watching this. You know, I should, you should definitely think about expanding out, you know, overseas. This is a, this is a solid rig. Yeah. Another thing I didn't mention, I don't want to forget anything, is you can actually slide this post this way and mount the shifter on this side as well. Uh, so that makes it work for everybody who wants the shifter on the left-hand side. That's, That's kind of right. cool. Um, anyway, so gtvracer.com. That's where you're going to check it out. And rev scale. I'll give it a red scale. I'll give, give it. it the rev scale. We gave it an eight on the rev yeah. scale, and I, I would definitely recommend it mm -hmm. a, a, for a wheel stand. I mean, this yeah. isn't, you know, I don't know about hardcore sim racing, maybe a little bit. You know, this hot lap, and we've been doing that in it today, and it held up just fine for that. Sure, sure. You know, except for just that little bit of movement. But right. it, it's, a, it's a really solid, stable, you know, especially for the weight. Yeah. Well, and, and like you said, the, the, the wheel stands, generally speaking, are more for the gamer. Uh, or somebody who's working their way up the ladder, or somebody who's compromised on space, because yep. uh, the next step up would be a full rig. You know, I want to uh, elaborate a little bit. I would have probably given this more closer to a nine, where Sean was probably closer to a seven, being yeah. the saw, yeah. because you know he mentioned the thing was popping up on him, and that, <laughs> that honestly would have got to me. And, and then I sat down and, and drove it, and I didn't have any problems with it. I gotta lighten up. No, that's your style, <laughs> man. I mean, you know what? You get it done. I mean, that's all yeah. that counts. So. Yeah. So that's the GTV Racer. Check it out at gtvracer.com. Coming all the way from Germany, we have Gamescom. Cologne, Germany, as a matter of fact. And yeah, right at the end of E3, we had put a shout out asking for somebody to, you know, hopefully step up and cover some stuff for us at Gamescom. And Andreas Nye answered the call for us, and it was really cool. So Andreas and I will be our first satellite reporter representing Inside Sim Racing. And over at Gamescom, we've heard that there's going to be a lot of coverage of F1 2010 and Gran Turismo 5. Breakout sessions, press conferences, all sorts of stuff going so on. So we're going to bring you everything we can get our hands on at Gamescom in Germany. Compliments of our satellite reporters. Yep, a little collaboration Inside Sim Racing and GT Planet, so kind of cool. Hopefully we can do more of that in the future with those guys. All right, so here it is, and this is what we got at Gamescom. This episode's top story is sponsored by Race Sim Central, home of sim racing news and forums since the year 2000. So I'm at the Sony press conference right now, which is about to end. We've got to play a lot of GT5, which was really good. They didn't have the two-minute limit on as they had at the E3. Now, for the press conference itself, it was a little bit of a disappointment. The only real news that we got there was the release date for Europe. It's going to be the 3rd of November. So I guess it's really good for us Europeans that it will not be much later from the US release or the Latin America release. But back to the demo here. You can see that right now. They had uh, different parts right now. Uh, the, I'm at the 
part where they have the 3D demos. So in order to really enjoy those setups, you need to wear one of the 3D glasses they provide you with. I got to try it out and I have to say I was really impressed. I took a spin around the Toscana track that uh, changes light conditions and I got to race during the night. And if you take off the driving line, then it's really challenging, but a lot of fun if you take it with a 3D equipment. Now in the other room, on the other side, they also had two different parts that didn't have the 3D equipment and I took a lot of footage from there. Uh, this build they have here actually included some kart racing, which was really interesting. Uh, it was the first time I got to try that and that was as well a lot of fun. You could actually see the little drivers in their carts going around the tracks and I can imagine if you take a spin with those with your friends, that's, that's just going to be hilarious. So I'm really looking forward to that because it gives a new edge to racing combining the physics that you have in GT with the, the fun of casual kart racing. Now, there were only premium cars in the demo here, so I didn't really get a chance to look at standard cars, um, but we will get to know more details about the difference of standard cars and the premium cars later on in the, in the presentation and that Kazanori Yamauchi will hold. The tracks they had on display, there were numerous tracks and since there was no time limit on it, we were able to actually go around, for example, the whole notch life for a little while. Um, we had the chance to test out the Top Gear track and I myself took the liberty to take one of the small Fiat's around it, which is really, really slow, but fun anyway. And quite a different race experience that you normally get. So that wraps up my presentation of the Sony press conference. We were really glad to be here. Uh, thanks to Alex from Sony for inviting us. We get to play the game Gran Turismo in a longer extent than we did at E3. And that was a lot of fun. We saw the kart racing for the first time and we got to look at some more cars. So that was really exciting. And we are looking forward to the presentation that Kazanori Yamauchi will hold uh, tomorrow. Stay tuned for episode 79, where Andreas meets up with Mark and Andrew from GT Planet, and they give you the full scoop from Gamescom 2010. I'd like to thank Andrea for giving us that coverage of Gamescom. Yeah, that was really cool. As a matter of fact, more to come in the next episode, episode 79. And what else we got coming up in the next episode? Plethora. Tons of stuff. Actually, we got a lot of stuff coming up. WRC, F1 2010, Hardware, tips, software, top sim cars. You name it. We got it all. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website at insidesimracing.tv That's right. where you can check us out on our forums. Go to the J Zone, talk to Jessica. Hi. All right. Check our flag is out. And so are we. <laughs> Promotional consideration provided by GamePod, the choice of champions. And Get your background images at wall-graphics.com. What a good way to do you to get two races to fall with each other and fall with each other. <laughs> <laughs>